Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the last video, we went through the membrane switch module, which was the keypad. And now we're going to go on to the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. So this seems like an exciting one for me. I'm quite excited for this. Okay, so lesson 11, DHT111 temperature and humidity sensor. So in this tutorial, we will learn how to use a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. It's accurate enough for most projects that need to keep track of humidity and temperature readings. Again, we will be using a library specifically designed for these sensors that will make our code short and easy to write. So we just need the Uno R3, the sensor, and then four female to male wires. Okay, that, does, that doesn't look how I thought it was going to look. Okay, the so DHT11 digital temperature. So this is mostly just, you know, what it is. We'll read the first paragraph. The digital temperature and humidity sensor is a com composite sensor which contains a calibrated digital signal output of the temperature and humidity the dedicated digital modes collection technology and a temperature and humidity sensing technology are applied to ensure that the product has high reliability what does that all of that mean no idea uh the sensor includes a resistive moisture sensor okay so it's a moisture sensor that changes its resistance based upon how moist it is that's okay could have just said that and an ntc temperature measurement device and connects with a high performance 8-bit microcontroller interesting so it's a sensor with a microcontroller on it okay is it is that it you got applications you got parameters uh pin description so you got the vdd power supply 3.5 to 5.5 volts dc but data serial data signal bus and a ground so you got a data wire power supply and ground i don't know what this thing looks like so it's not this is it Five volts, no VRX. All right, let's have a look on our thing. Ah, oh, there it is. It's a, okay, it looks the same as it does on the picture, but... Okay, let's have a look through our box. Ah, here it is. So it's underneath in there. I literally checked every single part. Okay, so put that to one side. And then we need four male to female wires. So we got there in the end. All right, so taking a look at the schematic, we've got five volts to VCC. We've got green data line to data to D2 and then ground to ground. So, um, okay, it looks like our ground is not labeled. Well, none of it's labeled. Okay, let's look at our wiring diagram. Okay, so here you can see, on based on the wiring diagram, you've got the resistor at the top there, and then that top pin is the data line, second pin is the VCC, and then third pin is the ground. So, ground, VCC, and then data. All good? Okay. So it's just a simple ground, the ground, Five volts, I believe we're connecting to five volts. Five volts, yep. So ground, five volts, and then digital pin two. That's it. So no need for the breadboard again. And there you have it. There's our temperature moisture sensor. Okay, so let's just open our code and then upload and see what happens. So not going to upload any header files or anything this time. Just going to run the code as is and then see what happens. Okay, so let's hit upload and then... Hopefully no errors. If we do get an error, then we're just going to have to add the library. Okay, yeah. So I'm assuming there's no library. Okay, so I've added the library and I added it via just so you know. Get include library, add.zip, add.zip library. And then I went into the folder where it was. And then I added this, dot, um, this dht.zip file. So I added that and then I clicked upload. And that, that seems to have worked. And hopefully hit upload now. And voila, we got it working. Nice. Okay, so just to reiterate that again, I went to sketch, include library, add.zip library, went to the folder, found the folder, and then ended up opening this dot dht, this dot zip file dht. I did that in, so I basically added in a dht library that they wanted, and then I hit upload, but making sure that my folder with my code with my code in it. It's completely empty as well. So yeah, hit upload and now it should be working. So now if I go to the serial monitor. Okay, so now we should see like every few seconds they go and start grading. So 
17 degrees and 64 percent humidity 17 degrees is quite cold right like like minus three outside okay so if i then hold the sensor now it should increase in temperature let's have a look okay so humidity is increased okay temperature eventually did increase there so i'm just holding on to the sensor now there you go you got 20 degrees and 80 degrees humidity I wonder why the humidity increases just because I'm holding it. That's interesting, right? Okay, so I've let go. I want to see if it drops down. Yeah, so humidity is dropping down. So it's actually very responsive. Temperature is still at 25 degrees though. The humidity has dropped even lower than it was. It was at 60% to begin with. How is that possible? I don't get that. It was at 60% originally as is by me holding it. So it responded quick to the temperature increase, but for whatever reason, the temperature isn't decreasing fast. I want to get a bit of like cold metal. All right, so I've got a relatively cold cup here. So if I just put the sensor on the cup, it should, the, the temperature should start to drop, hopefully. Or let me just put the cup on the sensor like that. This is a fairly cold glass of water. Temperature drops hmm, slowly. So it was at 25 degrees and 40% humidity. Humidity is climbing up now. And temperature is not really moving. So I'm going to assume like this is probably a, a very cheap popular sensor. So it's probably good enough for most jobs. But you can see here it's, it, it is slow. It was quick to like pick up heat and increase humidity. But it wasn't, it's not been quick to drop back down. I'm going to leave it for a minute. Just see what happens after a minute. Okay, so it's been a minute and there's not really been much movement. It's dropped down to 19 degrees. Let me just try and have it, you know, in this, pretty much in this glass of water. It just touched the water there. I don't know. I don't know if it's waterproof. <laughs> okay, so nice. So the humidity is climbing. So the humidity is very responsive. You see that now it's gone to 73%, 76%. But the temperature doesn't want to move at all. The glass is cold. There's no way the glass is 90 degrees. Much colder than that. So the humidity has gone all the way up to 87%. So that's working very accurately. But the temperature, I'm a bit suspect about that. Okay, so I really would like to test. I actually got the sensor wet. <laughs> okay. I'd really like to test the, the, the temperature of this. I don't know what. You know, the, the sensor is actually fully wet. Okay, so I'm just going to hold it hard and I expect the temperature to climb now to like 26 degrees or something. So it's responsive to heating up. As you can see, look, it's humidity and temperature has climbed. What's human body temperature? 28, 32, something like that. So. Okay, so I've been holding it for about a minute and a half now and it's peaked at 29 degrees temperature and then 50, 95 degrees humidity. So if I let go... And I'm actually going to place it on um, a cold bit of metal, a monitor that I've got next to me, which is definitely cold. I was going to 30 degrees. And I'm hoping to see it drop quickly. So let's see. This monitor is cold. The humidity dropped immediately. Temperature not so fast. Okay, so it was on there for about a minute and it dropped down six degrees in a minute. So that's not too bad. I mean, I don't think... You probably wouldn't use this to measure something that's going to fluctuate in temperature that much that quickly. So the humidity works rapid though, which is amazing. So and the temperature's there just dropped to twenty three degrees in in le in a minute and a half. So yeah, I'm okay with that. You know, no complaints really. I mean, I'm sure the sensor probably costs thirty p or something, so you can't really complain, can you? Now here comes a tricky bit of trying to un understand this code because I'm assuming that they didn't give us any explanation of the code. So. Before you can run this, make sure that you've installed the DHE library or reinstall it if necessary. Otherwise, your code won't work. Uh, static, so we've got a constant variable. So we're declaring our pin here. That's fine. Float, temperature, float, humidity. So we've got our variables for our uh, humidity and temperature. Although I can't see. Where have we declared? We haven't declared any variables for these. Okay, we've done it up here in the loop. Float, temperature, float, humidity. That's fine. 
So this seems more like a copy and paste job than an explanation of the code. A static ball measurement environment, float temperature. So float times temperature, float times humidity. I assume this is some sort of conversion. 3000 ULs. Milliseconds measurement. So why is it 3000 UL? Okay, upload the program, click the serial monitor. Again, no real explanation of what the code does. Okay, so here we can clearly see that it's printing out T is equal to, and then it's telling us the temperature, and then this one. This one, I assume, let's open up our serial monitor again. It does readings fairly slowly. We increase the speed of that, those readings. Measure once every four seconds. Measure once every... It's been about three minutes now and it's dropped to 19 degrees, which is okay. So, um, if I change this to 1000, will it measure quicker? Let's have a look. It doesn't appear to be measuring. No. Oh, no, it is, yeah. Okay. One elephant, two elephant, one elephant. So, it's about one, one and a bit seconds. Maybe two seconds. That's cool. So by changing this uh, change UL value to sense faster or slower. That's a note for myself there. What we're saying here is that if the measurement, if this function temperature humidity is an actual value, i.e. true is an actual value, then make the measurement timestamp equal to, mm, okay. What are we doing with this milli, milli, milli s measurement time sample. Okay, so I don't understand much about this code at all. Here we can see we're declaring the pin which we're using, which is pin two. Um, other than that, we're setting up the serial monitor. So this serial dot begin nine thousand six hundred is our speed for our serial monitor. Nine thousand six hundred bowed, whatever it is. I get that this value here is affecting. The amount of time between each measurement and in here we're just printing out all of that so what i suspect here is that this one is the decimal point so if i make this to two it should now display 18.00 and 65.00 yeah there you go okay so that second Second value equals uh, decimal point. Okay, and then so we've got degrees dot C, so degrees dot Celsius, and then humidity H is equal to, I wonder if it's the same as C programming, you can do that for new line, I believe. Um, let's try it. Maybe it won't work. But yeah, I don't really, I don't, I'm at the limit of my programming, programming knowledge, basically. So I can't, okay, yeah, so that is a new line. So I can't see how I would be able to improve this really. Uh, humidity and temperature, so upload. So this is the easiest stuff, right? I'm sure all of you could do this, but. Temperature, humidity, there you go. Like that, yeah. yeah, so I've got some ideas of um, what you could do with this. I mean, we could probably just use like another, um, we could probably use another if statement to say, you know, if it's too hot, then do X. We've got our values of temperature and humidity in here, right? So let's say, we'll, we, we'll do it outside of this if statement. What we'll do is we'll say if temperature, oh wait, let's use brackets. If temperature is equal to, um, but is greater than, let's say 20 degrees, or, right, and then humidity is greater than 70. All right, then we want to print 
here you could say for example end program right but we're just going to say uh error okay let's see if that works the temperature above 20 and humidity above 70 okay i didn't like it for some reason i assume that the arduino ide is automatically putting in closed brackets for me because that seems to happen to me a lot okay so we've uploaded it so now we've got our temperature we've got our humidity so if i now hold it we should get an error message i assume from the humidity first because the humidity is usually the fastest there you go error 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 <laughs> that is brilliant right <laughs> uh you know i just get so much joy from programming i really do i get so much joy from it it's fun okay so we're basically printing error on every single iteration of the program maybe what we could do is we could put a delay here to say wait you know three seconds upload that would probably give us more of a balanced calm program okay so we've got error error i don't know where where we are right now with our reading not printing our reading as well hmm. is it because we're stuck are we stuck in this if loop if statement it shouldn't be because it should just go through the if statement and then carry on through the program okay i'm not sure what's happening here i'm not sure why it's now not displaying the readings let's try and nest this if statement inside this one i mean code wise that looks sound to me but i don't know okay we'll try again okay so there you go so there it's printing the temperature and humidity we're at 20 degrees right now so it's not above 20. So if i hold it then it should go to an error 64 there you go humidity 72 brilliant 78 love it i absolutely love this this is fantastic okay so that's i'm not going to try and do anything more just because like i said i'm at my limit of programming but i hope you enjoyed this one and if you did leave a like i appreciate you guys watching and yes we shall quickly check what's the next one I'm really, really thoroughly enjoying this. We've got analog joystick module. Ah, oh, this is brilliant. I'm just excited. I feel like, you know, I wish I w had this when I was a kid. I'm 28 years old now. I wish I had this when I was 15, man. Or 14, 13. If you gave me this when I was 10, 12, 13 years old, I would have done some crazy stuff, man. Cool. All right, guys. I shall see you in the next one where we do analog joystick. Maybe we can make our little Xbox controller. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Peace.